Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Recently, NASA researcher Silvano Colombano said he thinks we should expand what we're looking for in our search for aliens to include different kinds of beings that aren't carbon-based, positing that a very advanced society would go beyond beings that die after a few decades. And that got me thinking, if we actually do find life out there, how will we react? Which led me to some studies presented at this year's annual meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. In the first study, researchers used a software program to analyze 15 written articles about three news events. The 1996 discovery of possible fossilized microbes on Mars, the 2015 discovery of a star that periodically dims, which seemed to suggest the presence of an alien megastructure, and the 2017 discovery of Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around a star. They ran the articles through the software and found that there were three times as many words indicating positive emotion than there were words indicating negative emotion. So, the study found that the news business, at least, seems to feel positive about finding aliens. In the second study, the researchers asked more than 500 people to write about their hypothetical reactions to the news that microbial extraterrestrial life had been discovered, as well as what they think society's reaction would be at large. The reactions were overwhelmingly positive, with most using five times more positive words than negative. So everyday people seem to feel even more positive about finding aliens. In the third study, researchers gave more than 500 people one of two articles to read. One group got an article from the New York Times describing evidence of ancient microbial life on Mars. And the other group got a Times article claiming scientists had successfully created life in a lab. When asked to describe how they felt. Participants exposed to the news about finding alien life on Mars expressed much more positivity than participants exposed to news about humans creating alien life in a lab. So, all three studies basically pointed to the fact that humans in general are stoked about finding aliens out there. To me, it's a no-brainer. It's almost as if it's written in our DNA, the desire to find aliens or life beyond what we know here on Earth. So we should heed what Columbano says, I think, and broaden our horizons in terms of what we're looking for. Because I think humanity could use that boost of finding something bigger than ourselves out there and giving us a whole new purpose, now more than ever. According to a National Geographic survey, 77% of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. According to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. That means that the number of Americans that believe that UFOs have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. With each passing year, the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increasing, as does the number of movies, television shows, and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being primed for something. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly, Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight.
Well, on this show over the years, we've kept you pretty consistently informed of any weird activity in the skies above us. Most shows don't do that. They're too embarrassed. But we're not. Why would we be? If alien life exists, it's far more likely we'll hear from it before we see it. Now, a telescope in Canada reports picking up a strange, powerful signal from far, far away. What is it exactly? Brett Larson has been looking into it for us. He's morning anchor for Fox News Headlines 24-7 on Sirius XM, and he joins us tonight with more. Hey, Brett. Hey, Tucker. Yeah, this is definitely one of those what kind of stories. Uh, this is something called a fast radio burst. It was detected multiple times. And it has many scientists saying we need more data. So a couple things can be a fast radio burst. It could be a neutron star with a strong magnetic field, two neutron stars colliding, a black hole perhaps, and yes, could actually be an alien. The latest discovery comes almost by chance from something called CHIME. It's the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment. And get this, the system wasn't even completely set up when they discovered the bursts. Now, the fast radio bursts found are from a galaxy very, very far away, one and a half billion light years to be exact. And it is just the second time that a repeat of a fast radio burst has been detected. And the object CHIME found produced actually six different bursts. ARS Technica reports that of the dozens of fast radio bursts identified, only one other has produced multiple bursts. And this is actually kind of significant. More and more scientists are looking into the skies with more precise instruments to find these signals. And they don't last for very long. This isn't something you're going to hear. This is like a fraction of a second. And it shows up on a graph. Now, some astronomers have considered the idea that these bursts could be from intelligent life elsewhere. And with more scientists searching for them, we will likely find out more about them and find more of them. I, I think it's alien. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say I think, I think it's alien. And I think it's fascinating that we, we, you point a radio receiver to the sky and we pick up radio signals. Now, granted, there are scientific explanations for it, but... So, so, so it. to flip it around, I just want to be sure I, I yes. understand this. I mean, there's nothing about it that I really understand, but there's no hard consensus that this is a naturally occurring phenomenon. So it's, there are serious scientists who believe this could be an intentional uh, yes. act, the yeah. sending of these radio signals. So there's, it could be, it could be from the collapse of a planet. It could be signals that come out of a black hole. And if, if it is signals that come out of a black hole, that's awesome too, because we can then learn more about them. It could be a neutron star. It could be two of them colliding. And again, that's also a very cool thing that we, we caught it. We can now hear the, the signature that it makes when it, when these things happen in the skies above us and the galaxies literally beyond the Milky Way. If it's alien and it's, it's, you know, get Jodie Foster, we got to build the spaceship and send her. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. What is the origin of life on Earth? We still don't know. One of my favorite theories has always been that aliens came and seeded the planet so that life could evolve into more aliens, making Earth and all of its life nothing more than an alien incubator. And now two new research papers just came out supporting that idea. Well, to some degree. Both of the papers were about something awesomely named panspermia, which I like to loosely translate to the sperm of the universe. The first paper is from NASA researchers, which shows how DNA-related molecules can be produced in space when ultraviolet light hits mixtures of water ice and methanol. They found some of those molecules in meteorites that have landed here on Earth, which they say shows that life can not only be made out in deep space, but can be transported to a planet where they could play a role in seeding life. So, not necessarily aliens as in the greys, seeding the planet with their sperm, but still alien life from space seeding the planet. This could easily have been the origin of life on Earth four billion or so years ago. The second study comes from scientists in Canada who calculated the amount of rock that Earth has ejected into space over the past 550 million years. When asteroids slammed into the planet in the past, 
large animals were already alive and kicking, including the dinosaurs. The asteroids blasted about 10 billion tons of Earth rock off the planet with enough velocity to make it into space. The scientists estimate that some of that ejected rock could have found its way onto other planets in our solar system, and some of it could have even left the solar system altogether. The chances are slim considering the dangerous journey, but it's entirely possible. And those rocks could have been carrying some of the life here on Earth, meaning Earth could have been the origin of life for other planets, meaning we could be the aliens spreading our spermy seed. Of course, neither paper actually says aliens seeded Earth, or that Earth seeded other planets, but they both confirm that it's entirely possible that it's happened in the past and could still happen in the future. And the fact that scientists are thinking about these things as we grow scientifically and technologically could mean that maybe someday we'll actually figure out the origin of life here on Earth. We still have a lot of learning to do, though, so who knows? Maybe we'll have to wait until we evolve into the greys we were always meant to be for that to finally happen. When thinking of the peculiar things of the world, the New Age movement tends to come to mind. Psychics, mantras, Astrology and crystals are some of the symbols of this diverse group of the extremely spiritually deceived. Another topic that has always interested New Agers has been UFOs and extraterrestrials. In the past, the idea that UFOs were real was relegated to the fringe. In recent years, however, several scientists have come to the conclusion that extraterrestrials are statistically probable. One of the leading astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking, states that aliens are real and possibly dangerous. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview and not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the prince of the power of the air, aka Satan. God is very real, angels are very real, and the enemy is also very real. In an article by a former New Age participant, Jim Sales describes a prevailing belief among New Agers. Sales describes what Israeli psychic Yuri Geller said, extraterrestrials would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. Another article quotes Barbara Marciniak in her book Bringers of the Dawn as saying, The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Geller and Marciniak's quotes sound quite familiar to Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The source of this information in both cases, Yuri Geller and Barbara Masiniak, is described as being from psychic contact with extraterrestrials. This is not something New Agers have invented. It comes straight from the mind of Satan, disguised as an alien. This has been communicated to them, and will possibly be the explanation for the rapture of the church, i.e., those who do not fit into the earth anymore, those who resist the initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, the troublemakers. Are you a troublemaker? I hope so. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. After 15 years of zeroing in on terrorism, the Pentagon is redirecting its focus on global threats. 
focusing more on the danger of nuclear conflict. John Jessup brings us that story. Most experts consider a premeditated nuclear war unthinkable, but regional conflicts around the world could easily escalate into nuclear emergencies, not to mention the wild card scenarios of a nuclear armed North Korea or Iran. We must never allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon or a nuclear bomb. The danger of a nuclear armed Iran is the president's chief worry. We cannot let the world's leading sponsor of terror, a regime that chants death to America and threatens Israel all of the time with annihilation and constantly screams out death to Israel to possess the deadliest weapon on Earth. We will not allow that to happen. And even after the historic handshake in Singapore between the president and Kim Jong-un last summer, North Korea has yet to give up on its nuclear ambitions. North Korea and Iran, uh, prospectively, are both very real challenges. But they are far from the only nuclear threats to the United States. Eric Edelman is a former diplomat and Defense Department official. The biggest nuclear threat uh, remained Russia uh, because they're the only other country with an arsenal that does pose an existential threat to the United States, although China's arsenal is growing. To contend with that threat, the U.S. is threatening to pull out of a Cold War era nuclear treaty if Russia does not comply with the terms by February. Dovayai, no provayai. Trust, but verify. That's how President Ronald Reagan characterized the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF, with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev some three decades ago. Now, that trust is eroding. Russia has more nuclear weapons than any other country in the world, and a new report based on hacked cables warns it may now be storing nuclear arms in Crimea, making Russia the only nation other than the U.S. to store nuclear weapons in other countries. Russia's top general said in December that a U.S. withdrawal from the INF Treaty would put a target on the backs of countries hosting U.S. missile systems. Both Russia and China are investing in new nuclear weapons and new delivery platforms. The U.S. has not built a new nuclear weapon in over 30 years. That, coupled with aging delivery platforms from the air, on land, and at sea, has created space for global powers to up the ante. We've grown very complacent about this because since 1945, nobody has used nuclear weapons in, in anger. Uh, and so I think there's a tendency to think no one will ever do this. That's not to suggest a premeditated nuclear war is on the horizon. Nuclear war would be crazy in the abstract and even in reality. Uh, no one's going to just decide to launch it out of the blue. Michael O'Hanlon, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute, insists that setting off a nuclear bomb would only ever be the last resort of a regional conflict spun out of control. The stakes would be extremely high in any kind of direct confrontation between nuclear armed countries because you don't know at what point the losing side is going to accept defeat rather than escalate to nuclear threats or nuclear use. The tendency is to think of Iran and North Korea as the most imminent threats, and they are. But the U.S. must be prepared for Russia's nuclear force and China's growing nuclear arsenal as well. It is evident that planet Earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death, destruction, and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, which has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet Earth, who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin, will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time as we read in Revelation 6, 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him. 
and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 7.4 billion, meaning 1.85 billion people will die during this time. When the fifth seal is broken, there will be a period of time when Christians will be martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ. When the sixth seal is broken, there will be a great earthquake. The sun will become black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon like blood, and the stars of heaven will fall to the earth. When the seventh seal is broken, there will be silence in heaven for about a half an hour. After seven seals are opened, seven trumpets are blown. When the first angel sounds, vegetation is struck. Hail and fire mingled with blood will be thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees and all the green grass will be burned up. When the second angel sounds, the seas are struck. Something like a great mountain burning with fire is thrown into the sea, which seems to be a meteor causing a third of the sea to become blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea to die, and a third of the ships to be destroyed. When the third angel sounds, the waters are struck. A great star falls from heaven, burning like a torch on the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, and a third of the waters become Wormwood, and many men will die from the water, because it will be made poisonous. When the fourth angel sounds, the heavens are struck. A third of the sun is struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them are darkened. A third of the day will not shine, and likewise the night. When the fifth angel sounds, Satan is cast down from heaven to release demons from the bottomless pit to torment those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads for five months. When the sixth angel sounds, a demonic army numbering 200 million will kill a third of mankind. 3.7 billion people have now died at this time, equaling half of the world's population. When the seventh angel sounds, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant is seen in his temple, and there are lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. After seven trumpets have sounded, seven bowls are poured out. When the first angel pours out his bowl, a foul and loathsome sore will come upon the men who have the mark of the beast, and those who worship his image. When the second angel pours out his bowl on the sea, it will become blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea will die. When the third angel pours out his bowl, the rivers and springs of water will become blood. When the fourth angel pours out his bowl on the sun, power is given to him to scorch men with fire and men are scorched with great heat. When the fifth angel pours out his bowl on the throne of the beast, his kingdom becomes full of darkness, and they will gnaw their tongues because of the pain. When the sixth angel pours out his bowl, it results in the Euphrates River being dried up, and the armies of the Antichrist being gathered together to wage the battle of Armageddon. When the seventh angel pours out his bowl, a loud voice comes out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. A devastating earthquake flattening everything on planet Earth followed by giant hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, completes the seal, trumpet, and bold judgments. God's judgment against this wicked and unrepentant world will leave no doubt as to his wrath against sin. Yet there will still be people blaspheming God and not repenting and giving him glory. Revelation 16.9 And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Revelation 16.21 and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Place and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Help but 
dad be, young lady? I done said you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. Breaking news, there appears to be a rash of catastrophic incidents taking place across the state. Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Este ha sido una mañana muy espantosa de un catástrofe después del otro. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So robes and positions and titles and classifications and auxiliaries and departments and works and paying your tithe and paying your dues will not save you. We are still experiencing the aftershocks of the massive earthquake that have devastated this entire region. But if you want to be raptured, you must be born again. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's over! We've all been left behind. <laughs> it's going to be joyful for those who are raptured, but it's going to be sad for those who are left behind. Life is life as we know it. You swore to me that you were going to get yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.